What's going on guys? Finishing up on a remodel on this house, about a year and a half now. The last thing that I've got to do is install this mini split unit. It's a Pioneer 12K and this is the head unit. This is the uh, PVC line set cover. I got a bracket there to install the outdoor unit. This is the line set and some miscellaneous parts. And then I'll show you the outside unit is in here. I just broke down the pallet. It came on a half pallet freight service. This is how it arrived on the pallet, actually a little half pallet. So um, why am I doing this myself? I called two HVAC guys to come out and to quote me a mini split unit to put right up there. Uh, the first HVAC guy that came out, um, he just didn't want to deal with it. He said that his company doesn't do mini split units and he actually called them and he, I quote him, he said they're trash and that none of them last and they're, you can't get parts for them and so on and so on and so on. So um, I called another HVAC guy who said that he could install the unit and he quoted me $6,000 for a Linux system, a Linux mini split. And maybe that $6,000 is worth it, and, uh, but it's not worth it to me. I'm not going to pay $6,000 to have a mini split unit installed. And I want to make clear, I'm not bashing or trashing uh, the HVAC guys or the HVAC industry. I have much respect for them. You know, they have to go through a lot of schooling, a lot of training. They have to keep their trucks on the road. And I understand why they charge a lot for their services. Plus, they have to put a warranty on them, so... If they can get $6,000 or more for uh, installing a mini split, more power to them. And, you know, if you want to pay that, more power to you. I paid uh, $1,100 or $1,150 total for everything that you see, including the brackets, the line set. The main unit itself was like $950 or $1,000. After I added everything, it came to like $1,150. Delivered on a pallet to my front door. So now here it sets. And... I have to install it. Um, I furnish all the labor and I have to vacuum the line set down when we're done. I'll do this over the course of uh, a few days. I'll take you guys along with me. I won't film every little detail, but I'll just keep you updated on what I do. So this is what I'm looking at down below. I think I'm gonna put it on that, on that wall above this unit. It'll set far enough back not to interfere with the, the venting of this unit. So I think we'll be fine. I'll put the electrical box above it right above that one. And um, the line set will just kind of come through the porch, run under the porch and to the wall and then down. I've got a 25 foot line set, so we've got plenty. I should have about three feet left over. And I got the boxes open, getting everything organized. And then everything in this box came, the 25 foot line set. Uh, I've got the communication wiring, drain hose and then it comes with a through the wall kit and then it comes with a pack of clay to pack in through the wall to uh, seal that up and then you got some um, wrapping tape for the line set and then in this pack here just some extra things that i ordered here's the wi-fi dongle it's just a, a usb piece that it plugs in, I guess it plugs into the unit, head unit somewhere. And then I went ahead and ordered the kit that I need for the vacuum pump or the connect or the adapter rather. So these are all the things they'll throw in at checkout. Um, I just went ahead and ordered them. And then um, the head unit was fine. It was packed very well. I don't see any damage on it. There's no damage that I can see anywhere so good shape there um let's see it's got a controller here in the pack got some connectors but now i need to uh take a look at the back of this and um, figure out exactly where we're going to hang it so the back of this you can see the line sets in here I haven't taken anything off yet to pull those out. I'm trying to decide which way that I want to, to put it on the wall. 
The instructions say the best way to do it, the recommended way is to leave the line set here, just like it is. And then you bring the, um, the line set in and you kind of do a sweeping motion and connect it in here, just like these lay. But to do that, I've got to do one of two things if I do it that way, because it'll go on the wall like this, just like you see it. It'll be right up there. And so these line sets will be running this way. So I can come through here, come down with my line set, but I'll have to take the head unit and lift it up from the wall. If I can get under there about six inches to work with. And that's going to be a little cumbersome trying to work behind there with it hanging to make my connections. So another way to do it is to make my connections here. Go ahead and unroll that line set, make my connections back here. And then I can kind of using my wife to help. I can hold the unit here and we can just feed the line set all the way through the wall. But that's going to be tough, I think, because once I get outside, I've got to make a turn. You know, I've only got about seven, eight feet there. And I got to make a turn and come out and do another hole here by the side of the wall through the deck and then go under. So trying to navigate that line set already pre-assembled, I think it's going to be a headache. So I'm probably not going to do that. The way that I think I'm going to do it is I'll take this, the line set here internally, and I'll bend them out straight here. And then when I put it on the wall, it'll be up here. I'll just make my hole right up there in that area and then use this column here. This one here by the door. I'd rather have it out there between these two windows, but it's just gonna be too hard, I think. So we'll use this, this area here, and bring it straight down our holes right here. So that's the plan and we'll see if uh, we can make that happen. I guess the first step now that I'm organized and got everything laying out is to go ahead and uh, get these line sets pulled out. Well, go ahead and get my template on the wall and see where we're gonna make that hole, that cut. I don't think I can get the unit directly centered over the window. It may be shifted over to the right here just a little bit so I can get my connection between the door and the window there. So decided to go over to the left here. You can see where I've got that board up there. And I was gonna put it on this window the problem is it shifts the unit over to get it to go through the wall there and it puts it too far over um, into the room this direction. So went ahead and then put it over here with the unit kind of sliding over a little bit. It sort of puts it more to the center of the room and kind of handles this area over here where all the windows. So I think it'll work out fine. That'll allow me to use the um, exit there for the, for the lines that I wanted anyway. But you'll see that I had to put this block of wood here, this one inch, to compensate for this trim. The reason for that is because I've got to have four inches of clearance between the top of the unit to the ceiling. And so I couldn't mount it onto the flat wall there. I wouldn't have enough clearance up top. So I had to come down into this area on the trim about right there but that'll still give me um it won't be it won't be below the window it'll be just right above it and then i've got my four inches there so let me get this fastened up all right got the bracket up everything looks good and my two and a half inch hole is going to be right there those marks the way it measured out. So I'm gonna get into this trim just a little bit. Got the hole cut and I used, let's see, this spider kit. Got it at Lowe's, two and a half inch. I was able to go all the way through the wall 
from just one side. And I went through at a very slight downward angle, maybe about a quarter inch drop. And they recommend that for water drainage. So that wasn't tough to do. I was able to stay away from the, uh, this molding here. So that worked out. Wasn't too lucky on the other side. I'll show you that. You can see there, I came through the that piece of molding there, that trim. But I'm gonna cut that out anyway. I need to cut it out because of the uh, trim kit. Needs to lay flush here against the wall. So I'm gonna cut it here and here, and then here and here. And then I'll have to cut that down there as well. So, so I'll go ahead and do that, but so far so good. Got that cut out and I'll have to run some caulking in there. I'm hoping that trim kit will cover the majority of this. Then I can just kind of caulk and do a little painting and touch up in there. So on this next cut out, I went ahead and cut it the length or the width of the trim kit. So I'm hoping that'll work. And I can just throw a little caulk in there, touch it up. I should have done that here, I just wasn't thinking. I'll do the same thing down there, cut it the length of the trim kit. Luckily this bead here is dead center. Kind of gives me a guide. So it has to be wired. The communication cables and the wiring has to go in before it goes through the wall because there's no way to get the cable up through the hole and up through to the wiring block if you put it on the wall first. Maybe so, would it be really tough? But the uh, the order I went in is black, white, red, and then my grounding block, and I'll do that on the, the same order, one, two, and three, on the other end of the unit. The instructions really don't tell you. It doesn't assign you a color per block as long. It just mentions, that obviously, they have to be the same on both ends. So, got that in there now, and now I'm gonna get ready and prep these lines, pull everything out, wrap them up, get them ready to go through the wall. All right, we've got the sleeve through the wall, got this um, crack caulked out, and got the trim cover kit on. Obviously it needs to go on first. So we're about ready to put the line set through the wall and then kind of make that bend. And then I'll have to go ahead and finish the trim or put the bottom piece of the trim kit on I still got to cut that hole down there. So that's where we're at right now. All right, so I won't be able to film this because um, I don't need both hands, but I've got the line set ready to go through the wall. This black tape is just temporary to hold everything tight. I've got the communication power cable. I'm gonna go ahead and feed that power cable through the hole as far as it will go. And then and I'll just kind of walk the unit up and see if I can get the top hung and then get the cable the rest of the way through the wall. It sounds easy, we'll see. All right, so I got to push through the wall, got everything kind of bent down into place now. Well, I hit a snag here, coming through the deck. You can see the hole there. I came in. Well, I went my drill. I came in through this, I hit this beam. It's a double beam. Actually, the the joist is sitting in here and this is a cap under the sunroom here. But you can see there's one here, one here. This is the cap. So I uh, came into the top of it. So I had to come in, come here and drill another hole to intersect that hole. And I put another one here. I think I have enough room now to bring it in at an angle and then come under, because we're coming under, making the turn, going against the wall over there with the line set. Need to clean that out a little bit, but I think it will be fine. One thing to mention on this, if you're curious, again, this is a cap, so I'm not into the structure. The, the actual support beam is here, and I just barely got into the top of it, maybe about an inch, so I'm fine there. 
All right, I got the trim piece back panel on. And I'm still a little skeptical about getting that line set through that little turn, but I, I think I can do it okay. Maybe a little frustrating, but we'll see. And if nothing else went right today, this trim kit went on with no problem. And it was exactly the length that I needed. I just used two pieces and then I was a little bit short and then I put this cap on the, on the bottom here because it fits perfectly. Just kind of taper around that. So yep, that works pretty good. Now, now to pull the line set through. And man, that's gonna be a bitch. All right, I was able to get these pushed through. Uh, it wasn't that hard. The actual copper lines were pretty easy. They came up fairly easy. The hardest part was keeping them straight and feeding them up through here. Um, getting the water line back behind there was a little tricky. And then getting the communication line, power wire was a little tricky. But got them in there. Nothing's in a bind. Everything looks pretty good. And I just hand tighten those. I haven't put any leak guard or anything on them yet. I just just hand tighten them just to hold them, hold the line set in place right now. But uh, yeah, looking good. So the line set's just kind of dangling right now. I still have the dust caps in place. And you see how they kind of go up through there. Now I've got to do something with the water line. I've got to kind of get it over to the side and just, I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll cut it or it's just got to hang to drain. I may, I may do something and maybe run it down that post or something, but not a big deal. But I've got to bend the line set around and let it follow the contour of the porch here. As I've showed you before, it's gonna go right through there. And then depending on where the line set falls on this wall, that'll determine my height of the outside unit that I'm putting here. That's about all I'm doing today. The skeeters are out and I'm about tired of getting bit. So I think I'm just gonna leave everything like it sits this evening and do it again tomorrow. All right, so get you caught up. I went ahead and ran the line set and uh, got a couple of changes. Originally I said it's gonna hang on the wall here above this other unit and a couple of things I didn't realize. Um, one is that unit a lot heavier than I thought it was. So it's gonna be tough getting it up there. And then the way the line set was coming across and then over, I would have had to coil it up about three times to do away with the excess line I was in a situation where the 16 foot line wouldn't work, it's too short, and the 25 foot line was going to be about five feet too long, so maybe six feet. So I had to come across at an angle right here. I don't like that angle, but it is what it is. These strap hangers are temporary. Uh, I'll get another kit, cover kit, and, uh, and the kit comes with a gradual turn piece that I, and then I can run it straight. And then, let's see, the unit will be about right here. Let's see, the, maybe the bottom of the unit, about right here. The line set connection will be about right here. 
So then I can just take these and pull them back a little and it'll just be a gradual turn right into the unit and I don't have to coil anything up. That's the plan anyway, but let me show you something. I'm a believer in uh, showing mistakes and I made a big one. So to the point to where that line set is going to come back out and I'm going to put a new one in. And here is the reason. Let's get this to focus. If you can see in there, I cut this away, the insulation away. You can see a kink in there. You see that kink? That kink is closed up to about 50%, I estimate. It's not a bad kink. And it's a little worse than what my camera is showing you. I can't, I can't get the camera in there. Maybe right here. There you go. That'll focus. So you can see that kink there. And I did a very careful job of bending it to making sure I was doing everything correctly. And I got a nice gradual bend in it. But then when I was tucking it up under here, I still had a little bit of distance here. And I went to about this area here and I pushed it tight. When I pushed it tight, it just folded right around that corner. So I kind of did it after the fact, not when I was bending it. So I don't feel comfortable. I did, I did some reading on it and I chatted with some HVAC techs and a forum and some of them said, you know, a one ton unit, it's going to cause a little bit of a restriction, but if it's about 50% fold in that kink, then it may be okay. Uh, most of the guys were saying, nope, fix it, you know, cut it out and um, either solder it or flange it. But all I've got to do is drop that line set, pull it out and I already have my path created and then put another line set in there. So my options are to cut it out, flange a new piece and fix it, or just put a whole new line set in. And I like the idea of not having another connection for a leak point. And, and I'm not, you know, that experienced in flanging. So I can get a new line set for a hundred bucks, a little over a hundred after tax and shipping. So I think it's a no brainer just to put a whole new line set in it. Anyway, that's where I'm at. So uh, got the line set on order. And in the meantime, I'm going to work on uh, installing the bracket on this wall. This unit is so heavy. I'm going to drill all the way through the concrete blocks with threaded rods and then Put washers on the other side of the block that way i don't have to worry about trying to use concrete anchors in this block i just don't trust them in the hollow parts all righty i got the bracket installed this bracket comes in two ways you can buy just the l brackets and then kind of match them up yourself or you can get this they call this a leveler and it really helps. So you mount this first and then get it dead level, then everything else falls into place. So I highly recommend going, paying the extra 10 bucks and getting this bracket with the leveler. Like I said, I went all the way through with, um, I think these are 5 sixteenths threaded rod all the way through. Uh, it, it calls for four anchor points. I went ahead and put one in the center, an extra one in the middle there. I'll show you what it looks like from the back. You can see there it just comes through. I put some uh, one and a half inch washers on there. Then my power will come in somewhere around here. Right over in there. And I just have to come. Uh, let's see. You can see right up there goes to my uh, electrical box. So I only have to come about I don't know, 
15, 16 feet. So getting it unboxed, it's a little bit, a little bit lighter, not much. I'm gonna try to carry it downstairs. I think I can do it by myself. And it came with these, these nice pads here, but I think that's for, I don't think I can use that on my rails. So the rail system or the hanger system came with these. They're still rubber. And they're just going to mount right under there. And then it came with um, the bracket system came with these bolts. They just go there a little wobbly. That bracket, that uh, that washer is not quite big enough, so I'll probably upgrade that washer. All right, try to carry it down. Okay, I got it this far. Hardest part was going down the steps of the deck. So I'm going to rest a minute and then lift it up there. So these channels, here you can see the channels and the feet. They should just slide right onto here if I've got my measurements correctly. And then I'll get the rubber grommets slid under there after, after I get the unit set up there. I should have enough room to slide it back and forth to get the rub coming down. Oh, there it is in place. That wasn't that hard. That's what she said. I need to, um, I think my brackets are, yep, yeah, they're good. They line up good. It'll have to be pulled forward. So I'm going to get the, um, these rubber grommets in place. I think they just snap in kind of like that. And these feet come over, bolt it down. We'll be good to go. So I don't like this bolt that came with it. First of all, some kind of cheap metric bolt. And you can see I barely have room to get threads on there. So I found some longer bolts and I'm going to replace them and I'll be able to get a lock washer under there. So I can't believe I didn't supply longer bolts. Better I'm doing something wrong and I don't think so. I'm just going to put the longer bolts in. Some of you may have noticed I had this bracket of this boot. I turned the other way so this piece that clips in I had up here and it was preventing this pad from coming all the way forward so I just swapped those turned them around all right you got it all buttoned down and it's it doesn't move. I didn't tighten it. That lock washer holding it will keep these, uh, keep me from having to cinch it too far down. It's, you can, you can tell it's still on the pads. So these are tough pads. These blocks of really hard rubber. That should be enough to keep the dampening or keep it dampened and so it doesn't transfer the vibration into the wall. All righty, next step is uh, power. While I wait on that line replacement. I can't believe I crimped that line. And then I've got just enough here to slightly bend these back. Come in here with them. I think I'll put my power right around here. All right, folks, I'll update. Probably won't work on it tomorrow. I've got to work on my real job tomorrow, but um, 
sometime later this week, I'll get that power in and give you another update. All right, I'm just finishing up the wiring. And then code, obviously, I think in all places calls for a disconnect. I don't know why you wouldn't have one anyway. But this is a non-fusible disconnect. I went ahead and ran with 10-2 um, wire. A little overkill for 15 amps, but uh, the system actually calls for, you can see here, a three wire or so, two hots and a ground. So no neutral in this system. I used a 10 2 and I think I could have ran, I got I could have gotten by with a 14 gauge wire if I wanted to, but I went ahead and went a 10, ran a 10 2 because if I ever wanted to upgrade the system, now I've got a, a heavy enough wire to be able to upgrade this unit to maybe a two or three head. That's about it for today. I'm still waiting on my replacement line set. And then we'll get it hooked up, get everything wired, get this unit wired rather. And then hopefully get a test run on it. All right, guys, it's about a week later since I last talked to you. And I got my new line set in. For the mistake we made kinking the line. There we go. Yeah, got the drain hose in there. Communication cable. I had to I had to get all of it. I couldn't just line set. So hopefully we don't damage that one. So I'm gonna go down and take the old one out and put this new one in. And I got a couple other things that I've had that I ordered. I just brought over to the house today. I got these crow foot, 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 crow feet. Wrenches. And I got some um, nylon blue that they recommend for the fittings. The connections. The unit comes with uh, a little pack of it, but uh, I went ahead and got a larger one. And I've got a real good um, torque wrench. I've got a Craftsman that I trust. So um, I had the torque wrench, so I went ahead and spent the money. This was like 20 bucks. I think this was seven or eight. So I'll be able to torque down the lines. I know a lot of people don't torque the lines, but. Um, I want to. And let's see. I've got this vacuum pump that I ordered off Amazon. There's plenty of videos online where people are using this one, this Cozy Vac, and um, it's got good reviews. Some people claim that it doesn't come with the pump oil, but mine does. And it comes with a gauge set. I'm sure it's not the highest quality, but I just need for it to work for this one project. And then I've got a couple of old vehicles that uh, currently the ACs are working on them, but if I ever have a need, I can use the vacuum pump and gauges on that as well. Let's see, it comes with all types of connectors. It doesn't come with the one that you need for the mini split. I ordered it separately. But uh, well, it comes packaged all in a box. I just unpacked everything and put it in that case before I brought it over here. So we may be using this today if I get that far. It's uh, early afternoon, actually about mid-afternoon. We'll see how far I get with the um, replacing the line set. And uh, I might get far enough to, uh, to vacuum it down today, we'll see. Okay, I got the new line set in. And much better job bending that time. I actually used a little 
round canister out of a rock tumbler to make that bend before I, I put it up through the deck there. So feel much better about that. Got it in and I've got just enough line set to make it to the terminals there. So that worked out great. Let me show you the, the old line set here that I pulled out and get a better look at that kink. I don't know if you can see that or how well you can see it. But, uh, yeah. I don't know if that would have been okay or not. Maybe. See, it kind of smashed in an oval. So I'm not sure. I don't know. Doesn't matter because we're not using it. Now I've got some copper for anybody who needs some copper. All right, so now I'm gonna get to torquing, get the line sets torqued up and hooked up, and then I may start vacuuming this afternoon. Keep you updated. All right, I got the line set connected or tightened down here and up top, but uh, I couldn't get my torque wrench to work. I didn't have the right crow's feet adapters that were too short and um, when I put my torque wrench on there it was in the way so I need longer crow's feet I guess but um, so I just hand tightened it kind of uh, felt through it I, if anything I over tightened which is just as bad as under tightening but now I have got to um, get the vacuum pump set up and um, see if we can pull a vacuum all right, I got the vacuum pump set up, and I've been running for about maybe 10 minutes now. And I am pulling I'm right at that negative 30 HG mark that that I should be at. So far, so good. I'm going to let it run about another 10 minutes, 5 or 10 minutes, and then, and then I'll shut it off and see if we hold it. Well, it's been about an hour. I got tied up with a tree service guy that came to give me an estimate. I'm taking out a couple of trees. As you can see, that needle has not moved. So we're in good shape there. Alrighty, I'm gonna let that continue to hold and get the power hooked up so we'll be able to test it. And I'll just uh, match up the same one, two, and three colors that I did up top. I don't remember what I did but I have a picture of it. And then my two hots go in here and my grounds. So pretty straightforward. So I picked up a couple of these flex tubes and um, I inadvertently picked up a half inch and a quarter inch, a three quarter inch. I didn't realize I picked up a three quarter inch. So I'm going to have to, uh, to pick up another half inch, um, but I can go ahead and get the main power uh, in this one half inch, but I can go ahead and get this communication line in there just temporarily. All right, I got everything wired up and then I didn't put the communication wire up through the retainer clip yet because I just have it right there until I get another flex hose for it. 
So I'm about to button everything up and uh, let's see. We are still holding. It's been a good two hours now, maybe longer. And I think we're gonna release the Freon. And then um, I'm good in here. I've got the main breaker on my panel in the house uh, cut off. So um, I can go ahead and turn it on. The, we'll go ahead and turn it on. That way when I hit the breaker upstairs, it will um, already be on. I don't have to make another trip. Uh, let's see. I think what I'm going to do, you can do this two ways that I've read. So I'll take an Allen wrench in here and I can just go ahead and release the uh, refrigerant because I'm still holding temp, temp, uh, pressure. And then go ahead and release all the Freon and then pull this off real quickly and hope I don't lose too much. But I think as an extra step, um, I'm gonna go ahead and release just a little bit just until I hear it start moving in the lines and then I'm going to come out here and pull the dial back just a little bit to see what kind of pressure I've got. I want to see positive pressure here. And if I see that, then uh, I know I'm good. And I'll probably go ahead and disconnect the line there before I release any more. Uh, All right. Moment of truth. Well, my gauge is already showing positive pressure there. And it is holding. I didn't have to uh, open the valve there. I forgot about that. That's just closing it off to the pump. They can still read pressure with that dial closed. I think we're good so i need both hands for this i'm going to disconnect it real quick and then i'll continue releasing the refrigerant okay folks i have completely released the refrigerant i turned um this one all the way out and the uh, gas side and then i turned this one all the way out as well so we're in good shape. It's my thoughts anyway. But I'll I'll tighten those down a little more in just a minute. But, um, yep, I'm gonna get some of this mess cleaned up, get everything back in my toolbox, and go upstairs, put power to it, and we should have a working system. Cross your fingers. All right. Moment of truth. I'll just put the batteries in the remote. And I heard this thing beep. quiet I can hear it you can probably hear it too on the video I actually thought it would be silent but definitely not silent 
Well, I mean, out, in, out into the room. You really can't tell. I mean, you can tell it's on for sure. The air is kind of getting cool. It's not cold yet. Let's go downstairs and, and look at the uh, outside unit. Outside unit's running. It's nice and quiet. line's getting chilled. This high pressure side is real cold. I need to finish out some insulation here. But it's getting very cold. This is very quiet. Well, hopefully that indoor unit gets nice and cool here in a minute. May take it a few minutes. All right, I just walked back up top and it is getting really cool. Cold, it's nice. Oh yeah. Yep, I think we're in business. Well, I didn't start the video in time, but as soon as I walked out, the drain hose here was, it was draining very well. There it comes. That's what he said. All right, so that's looking good. I really can't believe how white that is compared to that. It's the next day, I just came in the house. It is noticeably cooler out here than it is in the house. Nice cold air. All right, I got the trim piece up and I insulated the exposed pipes under there and packed the putty under there. I got a little bit of paint work to do there. I was going to paint this the same color as the house, kind of that green color, but I think I'll leave it. It's white and it kind of matches the windows, so just leave it white. I'm using some insulation out of the old line set to kind of make it the insulation for the connections here. All right, folks, I got everything buttoned up to my liking. I got the uh, flex shield here on the communication cable. Went ahead and did that and it's buried under the line set. And um, I went ahead and put some vinyl wrap over the, uh, the other insulation that I put on the connectors here just to kind of neaten that up a little bit. <sighs> Cheers. Okay, let's look at this line set first. Then I want to talk about the hoses for a minute out it doesn't look as bad as I thought initially kind of mushroomed out and I still say it's about a 50% kink so when in doubt replace your line set if you kink it or repair it let's talk about the hoses just for a minute so for a cheap pump I recommend this all day what I wanted to show you the condenser, the outside unit, where you, where this connects to, um, where you fill, where you vacuum it from, that connection has a Schrader valve in it. And if you'll see, if you'll notice here on this connector, this adapter rather, 
it has a Schrader valve depressor built into it because you have to have that. Make sure that your hose that you're using also has the Schrader valve depressor built into it. If not, if it's, if it's like, if, you, if your hose end is like this, if you'll notice there's no Schrader valve depressor in there, if you screw this onto your Schrader valve, you're not depressing that valve. So as you vacuum your line down, you're gonna get a false positive on your negative, or a false negative rather, on your vacuum. So just a little shout out there. I've read on a few different forums, do-it-yourself forums, where people have made that mistake. But most of the newer hoses today will have a Schrader valve uh, depressor built in on one end, but not on the manifold end. So be careful and don't cross these lines. If you hook them up backwards, you're going to get a false negative because it's not going to depress this valve. You can see in my video, uh, we had it hooked up correctly because when I released some of the pressure, I got a uh, positive pressure on my gauge. Remember that positive pressure we got? So having that positive pressure, I ensured that I had my Schrader valves all working correctly. And so then I knew that my vacuum was a correct, correctly into the negative territory. That is nice cold air. Well, folks, I'm going to end the video. Um, I highly recommend this Pioneer system. It's been almost one month now, and it's been running solid. No issues so far, except for that kink line set, but that was my fault. So if you're looking to install one of these yourself, go for it. I mean, if you can install a ceiling fan, mm, you might be able to install one of these. Uh, but if you're mechanically inclined and take your time, watch the YouTube videos, read the forms, the Pioneer system, this system came with a very detailed instruction booklet. And if you follow it step by step, it'll help you out as well. The biggest thing is take your time with the line sets and make sure that you don't kink anything. I hope I helped you out. If you like the video, please subscribe. I need subscribers to keep making these videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.